All right, folks, so we're going to work on this next uh, lab, and it's called uh, SBC Actuate. Uh, I just pulled down the instructions, and I'm going to open them up on my screen here. I'm also going to download the Packet Tracer file, and I'm going to open that up inside of Packet Tracer. So I'm going to let that load up. Get that up on screen. There, there is the instruction set here. I'm actually going to work off of my document, um, which I'm going to just kind of select, selectively pull over. But generally what we're doing here is we're going to connect um, a couple of like household devices to an IoT controller and then hook up a motion sensor to it. And then once the motion sector, uh, sensor detects motion, it will turn on the light and the coffee maker. So if you can just kind of imagine like you wake up in the morning and walk into the kitchen and the moment you walk in, the light comes on and the coffee starts brewing just the way it ought to be, right? That's the future we're moving into, <laughs> right? And you know what? This kind of stuff is actually all possible right now if you have the right home gadgetry. Um, now, most of us don't, right? Because, hey, it costs money. But with IoT, all sorts of really kind of weird things become possible. Um, and that's really kind of what this is about. But the fun part is, is this can be programmed. Um, and so let's go ahead and start building this one. Okay, so follow along with me here, folks. All right, first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add the devices that we need. And so we're gonna start with uh, the board to control it all. So we're gonna come down here to the panel and we're gonna go to the components button. That's the third button in the top row. And then we want to make sure that the boards icon is activated down here. And we're going to choose the second board this time, which is an SBC PT. And I'm just going to pull that over here. And I, I am intentionally putting it off to the right because I, I do want to like kind of put my devices over there and have my code on the other side of the screen. So there's the board. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on uh, the second icon in the top row, which is called end devices. And then in the bottom row, we're going to click on home. And then we're going to look for an icon called appliance and you'll notice it's the second icon. So end devices home appliance. So I'm going to drag an appliance on here. This is going to be our coffee maker, by the way. And it even kind of looks like a coffee maker, if you will. All right. Then under the same category, we're going to scroll over and we're going to find a light. So you might have to scroll a little ways. And if you can see there's a little lamp here. See that? And I'm going to scroll that over here. One more device we have to add, we're going to go back to the components button. So the top row, third icon, and then not boards, but sensors, which is the last icon on the bottom. So components, and then sensors. And then in here somewhere, there is a motion sensor right here. And I'm just going to drag that and put it here. Now, I'm also going to do this. I'm going to highlight all these and kind of move them over. And I'm, I'm doing that on purpose. Once again, I want to create screen space so that uh, I have lots of room to work and see all my stuff. And I, and I did a, I did zoom in, but now I'm thinking I zoomed in a little bit way too far, but maybe not. Maybe, there we go. So I'm just trying to make them big enough so I can see them all and that you guys in the video can see them all, all right? All right, from there, um, we're gonna go into each device and change the device name so it represents what it is. And so I'm using, so for example, in the document here, I'm using this as a guide. Uh, the motion sensor, actually it's right here. So like if you're in this panel down here, click on the third icon for components. And then the bottom row, click on sensors. 
And then it's like the sixth or seventh one, motion sensor. All right. All right, now here's, here's the process for changing the name on the devices. So I'm gonna click on this first one and it opens up the panel, right? Then you can go to the config tab and up here, you notice how it says display name? I'm gonna just change that to coffee maker. And then I'm just gonna click close. I'm gonna do the same thing with the lamp. Click on the config tab. And I think they, they actually call it countertop lamp. So I guess I should call it the same thing. Countertop lamp, as opposed to a floor lamp or a ceiling lamp or a wall sconce or, or whatever. Countertop lamp. Uh, do the same thing with the motion sensor. Okay, this one's a little bit weird. I don't see where I can change the name on this one. You guys noticing that? So I'm gonna click on the advanced tab and there's the config tab. And then up here, display name, motion sensor. Go ahead and close that. The control board, at whatever. We'll leave that as it is. All right. As you guys can probably anticipate already, we're going to have to do some IoT custom cable connections, and you guys should kind of know where that is now, right? But if you don't remember, click on the connections icon down here. And then over here in the panel, IoT custom cable. And there's a little chart in the diagram here. So here's, right, so we're going to go from the device, each device will only have like one control port to the SBC port numbered one, two, and nine, All right? So not one, two, and three, but one, two, and nine. Get catching that? All right, so you can watch me do it. Here we go. IoT custom cable, we're gonna go from, was it port one, D1 to D0. Then we're gonna do that again, custom cable, port two, to D0. And then one more time. This one goes from port nine to D0. If you want, you can go to your preferences again and you can turn on the always show port labels and then you can make sure they're correct. So it should look like this. What do you have an option for? There's no scroll, you can't scroll past it. Then just go with the highest number you have available. We will have to tweak your code if, if it doesn't match up. All right. For this, we're gonna do uh, the programming in Python. And as I kind of pointed out before, if you look at our Blackboard course shell, in the assignment listing, there's this Python code that you're gonna copy by the way. So that, that'll take a little bit of time, but let's talk about where that's going to be put. Um, okay, so we're going to click on the controller board. And if you don't see the programming tab, click the advanced button, which will be at the bottom. But if you've already done this, now you should, you should see this every time, right? So to go to the programming tab. And then we're going to click new We'll name our project, and I'm not sure what you want to name it. Um, what should we name it? I don't know, wake up. Right, because we're going to turn on the light and make some coffee. It doesn't really matter what you name it, ultimately. Well, actually, it does, it does tell us what to name it, doesn't it? So it says here, and I'm reading the instructions. Well, we, this is a project name. I'm still gonna call it Wake Up. <laughs> All right, but as far as the template, we wanna create an empty Python file. Should be like the second choice. 
click create. And then you'll notice that there is a main Python program already created. I'm just gonna double click and open that. And it is empty. Now the trick is to do this, is to take that code that you have here and enter it here. You know, so if you're clever about this, you can kind of split your screen and have the coding window here and then your sample code here. And if you're smart, you would zoom in on that a little bit so you can read it a little bit better. And then I notice, oh man, it's still not zooming in that great. So you could download the image and save it if that works better for you. Um, and I'm trying to like zoom in and the more I zoom in, it doesn't get bigger. So what might make more sense for some of you is to right click, save image as, and then just open that image in an image viewer where you can zoom in. And then I'm gonna kind of do this. And that way I just copy the code. And so the process is pretty manual. So just go ahead and do this from GPIO import star. Remember everything that, whenever you see a pound sign in the code, everything from the pound sign to the right, you don't have to type in. Now I'm going to take a shortcut here, folks, and I, I do have all the code already typed up, so I'm just pasting it in. Um, now I put this all in here, and what I want to show you guys is as you're going through the process of typing it in, because it is a little bit of a process, once you do get it all typed in correctly, and you hit that run button, okay, so the program is now running. And if you look down here at the bottom of the coding window, it's got uh, a little command in here. It says starting wake up Python, right? So like the program is running. Now the, the trick is how do I trigger the motion sensor in a virtual environment? So what you have to do is you hit, have to go into the packet tracer window, hold down the alt key and move over the motion sensor. And then you notice down here, after I move over it, Someone's awake, making coffee. See that? And then eventually the coffee is ready. Just to show you it again, Alt key is pressed, went over the sensor and the program code. And if you look really carefully, the light on the lamp went on and the coffee maker light went on. And then after a while, they turn off. So I'll do it one more time. Alt key, watch the lamp and the coffee maker. Lamp went on, coffee maker went on. After a while, it's making coffee and the coffee is ready. And the, both of them turn off. All right? Can you 